Alien oceans and Earth's new moon? No, it's not science fiction. It's happening right now. Welcome to 2024, where we're on the brink of discovering extraterrestrial life in our own solar system, and our planet's about to catch a mini-moon for a cosmic joyride. Buckle up, stargazers, because we're about to blast off into a universe stranger than your wildest space dreams. The final frontier? It's a lot closer and a lot weirder than you ever imagined. All right, you brilliant celestial sleuths and cosmic connoisseurs, brace yourselves for another mind-bending episode. I'm your host, Theodore, reluctantly ready to be your guide through the celestial circus that's unfolding faster than you can say, supermassive black hole. Oh, and before my brain decides to wander off into a tangent about the fascinating history of the telescope, did you know Galileo didn't actually invent it? He just pointed it at the sky first. Talk about a game changer. Let me introduce our resident experts, Gwen, our astrophysics sorceress, and Charlie, our planetary detective extraordinaire. Today, my dear Starship Troopers, we're diving headfirst into the cosmic wonders that are reshaping our understanding of the universe. From hidden oceans that could be teeming with alien life, finally, a use for that snorkel you bought for your spacesuit, to Earth's upcoming fling with a temporary mini-moon. We're talking space phenomena so wild, they make sci-fi writers look like they're not even trying. So calibrate those neural telescopes, my cherished cosmic explorers. Whether you're an astronomy ace, a space cadet, or just someone who's wondered if aliens would like your playlist, this episode is your wormhole to understanding the mind-bending discoveries happening right above our heads. And remember, this is episode 20 of our Space Exploration and Astronomy Discoveries series, part of an entire day exploring global insights and new frontiers. Today, we're seeing how the cosmos is not just expanding, but getting weirder and more wonderful by the minute. Let's embark on this interstellar odyssey and see if we can decode the secrets of the universe before my attention span decides to launch itself into a parallel dimension. kind of mind-blowing when you think about it like how many space missions are happening right now it's like we're living in a golden age of space exploration right and it's not just nasa anymore yeah we're talking esa jaxa is row even private companies it really does feel like a global effort now which is amazing right to see that kind of shared ambition yeah it's really pushing the boundaries of technology and collaboration across the planet Absolutely. And for anyone who grew up on sci-fi, it feels like we're finally catching up to like right. the future we were promised. Exactly. So for today's deep dive, we've got a ton of articles and mission updates Yeah. all about the most exciting upcoming events in space. From the moon to Jupiter, we're going to cover a lot of ground today. And speaking of the moon, you know, remember those iconic images of the Apollo missions, astronauts walking on the lunar surface? Get ready for round two. Round two. Because this time we're not just visiting, we're there to stay. This is the plan. Big plans. Yeah, this is about establishing a sustained human presence on the moon. Uh, Artemis is really leading the charge on that. And that's NASA's Lunar Exploration Program, right? Exactly. Artemis. And they've got a whole series of missions planned, don't they? They so do. What's the, the game plan? So Artemis 2 is scheduled for next year, and that'll be a crude flyby of the moon. Okay. Really important for testing the Orion spacecraft and all of its systems. Okay. And then that's like the dress rehearsal okay. for the main event, Artemis 3. Which is aiming for a 2026 lunar landing, I think. That's right. And that one's going to the lunar south pole. Oh, wow. Which has never been explored by humans before. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Unexplored territory right here in our cosmic backyard. Yeah. What makes the south pole so special? Well, scientists believe that there could be water ice. Oh, wow. In those permanently shadowed craters at the lunar poles. So we're talking about potential sources of water, which means... Exactly. Water on the moon could be used for drinking, generating oxygen, even as a potential source of rocket fuel. Oh, wow. Yeah, it would be a game changer. It's amazing to think that something as simple as water could, like unlock humanity's future in space. Right. But to get all that gear and those astronauts to the moon, 
we need a pretty impressive spaceship. We do. And that's where Starship comes in. Starship is going to be instrumental to this. So from what I've read, this thing is massive. It's huge. What makes Starship so different from like previous spacecraft? So it's designed to be fully reusable. Okay. Capable of transporting both crew and cargo to the moon and back. Wow. Landing vertically on the lunar surface. Wow. So this is like the space shuttle program, but on a much grander scale? Exactly. Oh. Starship is a huge leap forward in terms of capability and ambition. It'll be able to carry far more mass to the moon than anything we've seen before. Wow. Which paves the way for larger habitats, more sophisticated science equipment, and eventually even lunar settlements. It's incredible to think that we're on the cusp of building a permanent human presence on the moon. It's really amazing. It's like science fiction is becoming reality. Yeah. But hold on. It's not just NASA and SpaceX in on the lunar action, is it? Yeah, not at all. I was reading about a whole wave of other lunar missions yeah. from other countries and companies. Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing a resurgence of interest in lunar exploration across the board. That's amazing. Countries like China, Japan, the United Arab Emirates, they're all sending missions to the moon. It seems like everybody wants a piece of that lunar pie these days. They do. Yeah, we're talking landers, rovers, even missions to the far side of the moon, which yeah. is something we never get to see from Earth. That's true. So it's a truly international effort. Yeah, it really highlights how much we still don't know about our closest celestial neighbor. Absolutely. Welcome back to the deep dive. But you know, as fascinating as the moon is, there's another destination that's really captured my imagination. Okay. Jupiter's moon. Europa. Ah, Europa. The icy enigma. Right. Yeah, it's been a source of so much scientific curiosity. I remember reading that scientists believe there's a massive ocean hidden beneath Europa's icy surface. Yeah, a massive ocean. Possibly even larger than all the oceans on Earth combined. Right. And what makes Europa so compelling is that that ocean could potentially harbor life. Okay, so alien life. I knew there was a reason I was so drawn to this mission. Yeah. So how do we go about even searching for life in a hidden ocean that's buried beneath miles of ice? Well, that's where NASA's Europa Clipper mission comes in. Okay. Which is actually scheduled to launch next month. Next month. Wow. That seems so soon considering how complex this mission is. It's going to be incredible. What's the plan of attack? Okay. Are they going to try to drill down into that ocean? Not quite. Landing on Europa and trying to penetrate that ice would be incredibly difficult with our current technology. Yeah, that makes sense. So instead, Europa Clipper is going to orbit Jupiter and perform these close flybys of Europa. Okay. Coming as close as 16 miles above the surface. 16 miles? That's still incredibly close. It is. Especially when you consider how much radiation is around Jupiter. Yeah, it's a very intense radiation environment. So during those flybys, what kind of data will Europa Clipper be collecting? So it's got a whole suite of science instruments on board, and they're all designed to unlock Europa's secrets. Okay. So for example, it has an ice-penetrating radar. Oh, wow. That'll let scientists map the thickness and the structure of that ice shell. So we're going to get a glimpse into the hidden ocean below. We're going to see right through it. That's amazing. It's like having x-ray vision for an entire moon. It really is. What else are they going to be looking at? They also have spectrometers, which analyze light reflected from Europa's surface. Okay. And that'll tell them what the ice is made of and whether there are any organic molecules present. Which are the building blocks of life. Exactly. And here's the really exciting part. They're going to be watching closely for any plumes that might be erupting from that ocean. Plumes. Like geysers, but on an alien moon? Exactly. Things just got interesting. Right. Okay, so if they detect these plumes, what does that mean for the search for life. That would be a major discovery. Okay. Because it would mean that that ocean water is making its way to the surface where it's a lot easier for us to study okay. without having to drill through miles of ice. That's thinking outside the box or I guess inside the ice shell in this case. Right. It really highlights how creative scientists and engineers have to be when they're exploring these distant worlds. Yeah. But I imagine this mission comes with its fair share of challenges as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Jupiter's a long way from home. It's incredibly far. That's yeah. one of the biggest challenges, just the sheer distance. And the time it takes 
for those signals to travel back and forth. It's not insignificant, no. Yeah, and then there's Jupiter's intense magnetic field, right. which traps all that radiation from the sun. Yeah, you get those really intense radiation belts, which can be very dangerous to spacecraft electronics. Right. I remember reading about NASA installing this massive high-gain antenna on Europa Clipper. Yeah. It sounded like a pretty big deal. Yeah, that antenna is going to be essential for this mission because it'll allow Europa Clipper to send back those huge amounts of data despite that interference from the radiation in the distance. It's amazing to think that this antenna built here on Earth will be beaming back secrets from a world that could hold the key to are we alone in the universe. It's pretty remarkable. And even if we don't find definitive evidence of life on Europa, this mission will still provide invaluable insights into how habitable environments form. It's a win-win for science either way. Exactly. But while we wait with bated breath for Europa Clipper to reach its destination, yes. there are other cosmic events happening a little closer to home that are worth getting excited about. Speaking of closer to home, did you hear that Earth is about to capture a mini moon? It's true. This small asteroid 2024 PT5 is going to be temporarily captured by Earth's gravity. Yeah, it'll hang around for a few weeks, making it a mini moon for a short time. A temporary mini moon. Okay, so I have so many questions. Uh, First of all, should I be worried? About what? About it crashing into Earth. I've seen my share of disaster movies. No, no, no need to worry. This asteroid is very small. It's only about 37 feet wide, and its orbit's going to keep it a safe distance from us. Okay, so no need to, like, alert Bruce Willis or anything? No, no, Bruce Willis can relax. Okay, great. This is more of a gravitational dance than a near-Earth object threat. So it's just going to hang out for a bit and then head on its way. Exactly. Can we see it? See it. With the naked eye. Yeah, with the naked eye. Yeah. Unfortunately, no. This mini moon is too small and way too faint to be seen without a very powerful telescope. Okay. Professional astronomers might catch some images of it, though. Okay, cool. Yeah. So keep an eye out for those pictures. Exactly. Now, shifting gears from mini moons to mega missions. Right. We've got the SpaceX Crew 9 launch coming up soon, don't we? We do. It's happening soon. Fresh crew heading to the International Space Station. Yeah, the launch is scheduled for September 28th. Mm -hmm. So, just a few days from now. Wow. And this mission is interesting because it's carrying two NASA astronauts who are actually already up on the space station. Oh, really? Yeah, they're originally supposed to come back on Boeing Starliner. Ah, yes, the Starliner. Were there some technical challenges? There were. With their recent uncrewed test flight? Yeah. So what happened? Well, Boeing is still working to resolve those issues. Okay. But it definitely highlights how complex and risky space travel really is. Absolutely. Even with all the advancements we've made, it's still not easy. Not at all. So in the meantime, those astronauts will be hitching a ride back on Crew-9's Dragon spacecraft. Exactly. Yeah. A nice little crew swap. It's amazing to see all these different space agencies and companies working together, you know. It's great. Adapting to these challenges. It really shows the spirit of exploration and ingenuity. It really does. Now, while we're on the topic of, like, looking up at the sky... Yeah. There are a couple of other celestial events coming up soon that are worth marking on our calendars. Like what? So there's the annular solar eclipse on October 2nd. Oh, nice. A ring of fire. Yeah. And where is that one visible? It's going to be visible from the Pacific Ocean, southern Chile, and Argentina. Okay. And then we've also got the Draconid meteor shower. Oh, cool. Which peaks around October 8th. Nice. So get those telescopes ready. Exactly. Set your alarms and don't miss out. Yeah, it's a good reminder that there's always something amazing happening up there. There really is. If you take the time to look up. It's incredible to think that we're living in a time when we have so many missions, discoveries, and advancements in space exploration all happening at once. It's truly remarkable. Who knows what wonders await us in the vast expanse beyond our planet. The future of space exploration is bright. It really is. So keep looking up exploring and stay curious because as we've seen, the universe is full of surprises. Well, my esteemed exoplanet enthusiasts and beloved black hole buffs, we've reached the end of our journey through the cosmic carnival of wonders. Feeling like your brain just went through a wormhole? Yeah, mine too. So, what's your take? 
Ready to pack your bags for Europa's potential alien beach party? Or are you more excited about Earth's upcoming mini moon fling? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Are you team Let's Find E.T.? Or keep the aliens in the movies where they belong. Your voice matters in this grand experiment we call space exploration. Remember, every astronomical breakthrough in history started with someone asking, what if? So keep questioning, keep exploring, and who knows, maybe you'll be the one to discover the next mind-bending cosmic phenomenon. Just promise me you'll use your powers for good, okay? No weaponizing black holes or trying to lasso asteroids, please. The universe isn't ready for that level of cosmic mischief. Until next time, stay curious, stay skeptical, and for the love of all that is interstellar, don't forget to look up once in a while. You never know what cosmic wonders you might spot. This is Theodore, signing off from the intersection of science and science fiction. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go make sure that Mini Moon isn't planning on moving in permanently. It's way too clingy for Earth's own good.